Hi, thanks for watching this video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build this camera slider at home for around $30. It doesn't require any specialized parts, tools, or expertise, and anyone can do it. Now, having a camera slider like this that functions just as well as any commercial camera slider on the market will allow you to replicate the Hollywood dolly effect and add a lot of production value to your videos. So I hope you follow along and use this video to make your own camera slider at home. Start things off by gathering together all the materials for this project. You'll need four bolts with coupling nuts roughly the same size as I have here. You'll need three rollerblade wheels with mounting hardware. I'm using ones with 76mm diameters. You'll need six feet of one inch by one inch by one eighth of an inch angle aluminum and two feet of one inch by one quarter of an inch aluminum flat bar, some five minute epoxy steel, and a tripod head and bolt to mount it. Cut the angle aluminum into two pieces that are three feet long and set them to the side. From the flat bar, cut two pieces that are six and a quarter inch long, one piece that's four inches long, and one piece that's three and a half inches long. Start off with one of the six and a quarter inch bars. Make a line directly down the center from end to end by first measuring out the center on either side, that's half an inch, and then connecting the points with a straight edge. Now measuring from either end, mark off half an inch along the center line. Square these marks off. Measure and mark a 45 degree diagonal from the center end point to the ends of the line you just drew. Do the same on both sides. Now cut along these diagonals that you just drew, and the end result is a clean 90 degree angle that should fit snug into the angle aluminum. Use the same method on the other 6 and a quarter inch bar. Once both pieces are cut, check to see that the ends are the same distance apart and that they fit snug inside the angle aluminum. If they don't, use a file to clean them up. It is very important that these measurements are accurate as it is vital in both the structural integrity and the functioning of the finished slider. Start off with the 3.5 inch bar. Just as in the previous step, make a line directly down the center. Measure in half an inch from one of the ends and square it off. Measuring along that line, mark a quarter of an inch on either side of the center line. Do the same along the tops and join the points like so. We'll need to cut the corners off such that we're left with a half inch by half inch tab sticking off the end of this piece. From the other side of the bar, measure in an inch and square it off. This time, measure 1 8 of an inch from either side of the center along the 1 inch line and along the end. Join these lines up with your straight edge. We'll need to cut so that we create a slit a quarter of an inch wide and one inch long directly down the center of this end. Go ahead and cut the slot out here and the corners off here and here. And if you're having trouble with this cut, you might need to use a small hand saw. Once you've made those cuts, take the 4 inch long piece and make a line down the center. Measure 1 and 3 quarters of an inch in from either side and square the marks off. Now measure 3 eighths of an inch along the center line from either end and just make a mark there. You'll need to drill a hole for the rollerblade wheels to mount to these points later on. 
cut out the half inch by half inch square in the middle. This will make a joint with the 3.5 inch bar we cut a tab into previously. Once you've made this cut, check to ensure the pieces fit together well and use a file to make any adjustments necessary. Now go ahead and drill the holes. Remember to always use a punch to mark the center of the hole before you drill. I'm using a quarter of an inch bit, but you might need to use a different size depending on the wheels and hardware you have for this project. Since we'll be using epoxy to hold the joints together, we don't want smooth surfaces on the parts we'll be gluing. Use a file or another method to scratch up the ends of the side supports, the tabs, and even a side of the nuts. Make sure there is no oil, grease, or dirt on the joints or the ends of the angle aluminum. Mix the epoxy on a clean piece of cardboard or plastic. Ensure an even and thorough mixture. Apply epoxy to the ends of the side supports and set them in place between the angle aluminum. Squeeze the angle aluminum together so that they fit into place on the side supports. Use a clamp to hold the frame together while the epoxy hardens and do your best to ensure the frame is square and flat. Apply epoxy to the outside of the joints and work it into any gaps. Next, mix some new epoxy and apply some to the joint of the dolly. Lay the dolly on a piece of paper and apply a coat of epoxy to the top, working it into any gaps in the joint. Leave it to harden. Meanwhile, apply a liberal coat of epoxy to your nuts and use a clamp to hold them to the frame. Once clamped in place, I recommend you apply more epoxy to the side of your nuts, just to prevent one of your nuts from falling off during use. Once the glue has hardened, remove the clamps and thread the bolts into place. Now take the dolly and drill a hole about a quarter of an inch below the joint for your tripod head to attach to. Finger tighten the two back wheels in place and slide the third wheel into the slot. Drop the dolly into the track, pull the wheel tight along the slot until it's held in place and tighten it. Check to make sure the dolly slides well along the track. Install the tripod head and finally spray some Teflon lube on the track to make it slide better. Thanks for watching this video and make sure you check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel.